Hello, my name is Kishwani. That's K E S H W A N I, Kishwani. We are here because we want to prepare for SAT. We have been solving SAT math problems out of this book here. The SAT is Official Study Guide 2020. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. Make sure you buy 2020 edition and make sure the book is always in front of you so that you can follow the work and solve the problem with me. Don't just sit there passively as I've told you many times. Uh, yesterday, uh, today we're going to start do some problems that you will find on page number 461. Turn to page 461, make sure, make sure that it is in front of you. If at the end of the video you find it helpful and you decide that you would like to work with me, that you would like to hire me as your tutor to help you get, re help you get ready for the exam, you can reach me at kishwaniprep at iCloud.com or you can visit my website kishwaniprep.com uh, number, 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 number 8 and 9, pro problem number 8 and 9 that you see there on page number 461 are the two problems that we did yesterday already on day number 11. So I'm not going to obviously redo it. Uh, we'll pick up from number 10. We'll pick up from number 10. As you can see problem number 10 is already on the blackboard. It says that we have an equation. We are told that the equation below holds for all values of x. We are told that a and b, we see a b and we see a e, a, we are told that those are constant. And the, what the question is here is, what is the product of a and b? How much is a times b? Let's get going, shall we? Okay, let's get going. So we're going to expand this thing on this side. That side is already there. We're going to expand this side. We just have to pay attention. ax times 5x squared, because it's going to give us 5ax cubed. And we're going to have negative a times b x squared then we're going to have positive 4 as you can see I'm going slowly because I don't want to I don't want to mess it up I don't want to make a mistake because it's very easy to make a mistake so that part is done and now we have to do 3 3 times 5 is 15 x squared I don't want to continue writing here all the way through for two reasons first of all it's going to get on this side second reason is that I want to line up the like term so here we have 15 x squared let's put it right under here 15 x squared and then we have negative 3b negative 3bx and finally we have 12. The first thing we notice is that the 12 the constant appears on both sides obviously it's the same thing 12 and 12 that plays no role that absolutely plays no role we don't have to be concerned about that what we are interested in finding out a and b so we can figure out the product so let's begin shall we since these two sides equal to each other here we see 20x cubed. This coefficient of x cubed must agree with the coefficient here. Because this is also x cubed and this is also x cubed. And since they are equal to each other, they must agree. So what we find is that 5a must equal 20. 5a, 5a must equal 20, which in turn tells us that a must be 4. So that was the easy part. Let's work on the b. So let's add them up here. So what we find here is 15 minus AB, 15 minus AB, X squared. And here we find uh, plus, put down X outside here, and we have 4A minus 3B, 4A minus 3B. There we go. So at this point we have two options. I, we, can either, we can either match the coefficient of X squared and work through that, or we can match the coefficient of X and work through that, work through that, and it will give us the same same exact thing, same exact answer. Now, of course, in the real exam, we're not going to be damn silly to do both ways. But here, I'm going to do it both ways just to just for the learning purposes. But either one of them will do. You only you only have to do it once. Let's do x squared first. So we notice that 15 a b must equal this is x squared must equal negative nine because that's the, that's the coefficient of x squared here, which means, and we know a is equal to four. 15 minus a times b, 4 times b equals minus b. Let's pick up speed here. So negative 4b, negative 4b equals, we bring the 15 over there, we're going to end up with negative, negative 24. Negative 4b equals negative 24, which means 4b equals 24, which means b must equal 6. b equals 6, a equals 4, a times b is 6 times 4 or rather 4 times 6, which is 24. There we go. 
or we could have gone the other route. We could we could have compared the uh, we could have compared the coefficient of x, and we'll get the same answer, obviously. So if we go that route, four a minus three b must equal negative two. And again, we know the value of a. Value of a is six. Value of a is four minus three b equals negative two. So negative three b must equal negative two. Bring sixteen to the other side. We can end up negative sixteen here, which means negative. Which means which means negative 3b equals negative 18, divide both sides by negative 3 and you will find that b equals 6 just like before. b equals 6, a we found out is 4 and therefore the product is 4 times 6 which is 24. Now, at this point, I have a confession to make. I have a confession to make, an embarrassing one. When I solved the, pro when I solved the problem, when I solved this particular problem, I did exactly what I'm sharing with you, obviously. And then, at the, then at the, in the back of the book, I wanted to check my answer. As I was looking at the answers, and as I looked at their work, as it is solved in the book, I felt very silly that I missed something so obvious. And something so obvious is this. I'm going to erase this part. I'm going to erase all of this part. All of this part that we see here. I'm going to erase all of this part. I hope you picked up on it. I did not. I hope you picked up. You see, it says 15 minus AB minus 15 minus a b minus 9 we are done we were done here we want we don't care what a is and we don't care what b is we are interested in their product the product is right there a times b is right there we didn't have to do any of this mumbo jumbo we could have stopped right here we didn't have to waste our time trying to figure out a and b separately it says 15 15 minus a 15 minus a b equals so minus a b must equal minus 9 minus 15 which is negative 24 so if negative AB equals negative 24, AB is equal to 24. There you go. I don't know how I missed that. That's, that would have only worked if we, have, if we had worked with the coefficient of x squared. Now had we gone this route to start out with, then of course we had no choice but to do it out what we did here because there is no AB here. A and B are separate. But I don't know how I missed that. I did not pick up on that. Anyway, so that was it. Sometimes it works out that way. Sometimes, sometimes things are so, things are so bloody obvious, staring in your face, and yet you miss them. Number eleven. Number eleven says that x equals x over x minus three equals two x over two. Two x over two. Well, we have two options here. The question here is, all possible value of, uh, values of x that satisfy the equation. All possible values of x is what we are looking for. And here are the answer choices. Answer choice A says 0 and 2. So the one option is what I am about to do. One option is simply try out the answer choices and see which one works. It doesn't take that long. It's going to go quite fast. It's going to go quite fast. Very first thing I'm going to do here, you notice you here is 2x over 2. If it's 2x over 2, why waste our time with that? Cross out the 2. Divide top and bottom by 2 is simply x, x over x minus 3 equals x. Let's try 0 first. If we try 0 here, on this side we get 0. 0 over anything is 0, and 0 equals 0. So 0 works. You can clearly see. If you put 0 here, you can put 0 here, but it's going to work. Let's try out the 2 first. Let's try out the 2 next, see if it works also. And if it also works, then, then it's the right answer. Because you can't have two right answers. If you find one, that's it. Let's let's try two. If you put in two here, we end up with two over two minus three, and that has to equal x. Remember now, two is we're trying out two here. There you go. Oh, it did not work. It did not work because this is negative one. So we here we end up with two over negative one, which is negative two, and it does not equal two. A is not the answer. I don't know, for some reason I remembered A to be the answer. A is not the answer. Let's try out B. B says 0 and 4. 0 and 4. Now we, have, we don't want to waste our time trying 0. We already tried 0 before and we know it works. We just have to try 4. Let's try 4 here. We end up with 4 over 4 minus 3. 4 minus 3 is 1. And that has to equal x. 
which is 4. Very good, that does work. Oh, B is the answer. The answer is B. It works for both 0 and 4. I'm going to erase this 2 and 2 because otherwise it gets confusing. It, they're gone. We, we cancel them out. On this side we only have X. B is the answer. I'm going to quickly show you now that C is not the answer. That C will not work. In C they say, in C they say negative 4 and 4. Again, we don't have to waste our time trying 4 because we know already 4 works. We just tried it, it works. So 4 is, 4 is working. Let's see if negative 4 is going to work. And of course it's not going to work because we can't end up with two right answers. Let's put in negative 4 here. We're going to get negative 4 over negative 4 over negative 3. As you can see, it's getting bumbo jumbo here. This thing is not going to equal negative 4. This thing is not going to equal x. C is not the answer. And similarly, B, here's the tricky part with D. We just have to pay attention as you're doing it. D, D says 4. And 4 does work right here. We just tried it. 4 does work. But D has 4. But has no zero. The solutions are zero and four, so you have to be careful. You have to be careful, that's why it's always a good idea to go through all four of them, even if you find one answer, right? Just just to make sure that some because had they put this first instead of instead of D, had that appeared as A or B, somebody might stop right here because it works. But you have to go through because they're looking for all possible values. So if there's another combination if there is another combination which has 4 and something else, you need to try that. And that's this one right here. So this was one way. This was one way. This was a very long and tedious way. What happens is that sometimes you have to be flexible. You have to be supple. You have to be, you have to be agile in the, in, the, in the exam to adapt to the situation. Sometimes it is quicker to simply try out the numbers that they give you in the answer choices and see which one works. And sometimes the algebra is very fast. Algebra here is, is a cinch. Let's do it algebraically, shall we? If you do it algebraically, it's very straightforward. Watch what happens. So this is x. This is x over 3. Okay, let's, let's begin. So we'll cross multiply, you're going to get x equals to x squared minus 3x. And you, you, you subtract the x over there, you're going to end up with x squared minus 4x equals to 0. Take out the common factor of x, and you're going to end up with x minus 4 is equal to 0. And since the product of two quantities is 0, that implies that x is 0 or x is equal to 4. Because if you put x4, that would be. So that was the other way. In both ways are equally good. It's up to you what clicks in your mind at the in the exam at the time. But don't dwell on it. Just pick one and move on. Once you once you pick one route, don't stop your journey halfway through and say, oh maybe I should try algebraically. We already invested time in it. Just continue with it. Number 12. Number 12 says. We're done with number 11, we are on the next page. Number 12 says that we have 1 over 2x plus 1, which was which plus 5. And all they want us to do, all they want us to do is simplify this thing. So let's simplify it by getting a common 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 denominator, common denominator 2x plus 1. And here we have 1 over here, and here we're gonna have 5 times 2x plus 1. This quantity right here. Open the parentheses and pay attention. We're going to end up with 10x and 5. Pay attention here. So here we have 1, and here we're going to have 10x, and here we're going to have 5. Let's finish up the top part so we will worry about the bottom part. So we end up with 10x plus 6 over 2x plus 1, and that's your answer. Nothing to it. Very simple, very straightforward. Number 13. Here you will see an example, number, in number 13, here you will see an example where it is much quicker to simply try out what is given to us instead of doing it algebraically, instead of using it, instead of trying to use your knowledge of geometry. We are dealing with parabola. So we are given, we are, we are given a function y of x and the question is which is the, which is the correct equation. Let's erase this part. Which is the correct equation? And here is the parabola. And it doesn't have to be drawn with a lot of detail. As a matter of fact, I didn't even need I didn't even need the x and y axis because I could have just drawn it freehand. That's what I'm gonna do. So here is one point here, and then we give given two more points. There is one right here and there is one more right here. 
No, in the in the in the book itself, they just give you three points without any names. But we're gonna we're gonna christen them so that it's easier to talk about. Let's call this point point P. Point P goes through three one. We are told, and point point Q and R will have the same y coordinate. As you can tell, they they have, they are the same distance. They're gonna have the same y coordinate, different x coordinate. Two and five, two and five, and four and five. Let's, let's get going, shall we? There are only four answer choices. It can it can it can hardly be that bad. Let's start, let's, let's start with answer A. Yeah, I think I think I was remembering this question when we were I think I was remembering this question when we were doing the last one where I thought the answer was A. Well I think I just gave it away, didn't I? Let's begin, shall we? Let's start with point P. That's why I give them names so it's easier. We're going to start with point P, see if it works. We don't have to try all three points. If two of the three points work, it's probably the right answer. And then we're going to keep on going to make, make sure the others do not work. And that's all it is. We don't have to try all three points. Okay, let's try three and one. So four times, oh, there we go. Three minus three is zero, so it's just zero. No need to write all the mumbo jumbo. So y simply equals zero plus one. Oh, there we go. When we put in x equal to three, 3 minus 3 is 0, and y turns out to be 1, which is exactly what it says. So, P works. Let's try another point. Let's try Q. Let's try Q. And Q has a coordinate of 2 and 5. 2 and 5. So, y is equal to 4 times, we put, we're putting in 2 for x. 2 minus 3, x is squared, plus 1. And when we finish working on it, if it turns out to be 5, which is the y coordinate of Q, then that, that is also working. 2 minus 2 minus 3 is negative 1 and negative 1 squared is just going to become positive 1. Oh, there you go. Therefore, it's just 4 plus 1 is 5. It works. I got it. The answer is A. The answer is A. We tried two points and they both work. I'm going to quickly show you that B, C and D do not work. Whether or not you actually want to do that in a real exam, it's entirely up to you. It all depends on how much confidence you have in your work. That's all it is. How much confidence you have in your work, that's one factor. The second factor that determines for me whether or not I want to try out all the others is how much time I have. This time is not a luxury. Time, time is very precious. Uh, it's not a luxury that you can afford all the time. It is a luxury to go around trying B, C and D when you already found one that actually works. So if you have, if you have time on your hand or if you're not confident about your work, it's, a, it's your call as I said. B says y is equal to 4 times x plus 3 squared. As you can clearly see, it's not going to work. It is not going to work because we just tried x minus 3 and it worked. All of a sudden, this is not going to work. Let's try P. Let's try point P. Point P is 3, 1. You can already see 3, 1. It's going to give us 4 times 3 plus 3 squared. And that thing is not going to equal 1. That thing is not going to equal 1, obviously. B is not the answer. C says, it has to equal 1 because that's the y coordinate over there for P. C says, y is equal to x minus 3 squared plus 1. Let's try point P. And point P here, point P here would work because the x coordinate of point P is 3 and 3 minus 3 is 0, so it drops out and y equals 1. Point P does work. I'm not going to do all the work because it's silly. 3 minus 3 is 0. I'm not going to write this. This thing is 0 and this is 1 because x coordinate is, when you put in x coordinate 3, it works. y turns out to be 1, which is exactly what that is. Let's try q. In q, x is 2. Pay attention, okay? x is 2, so we're going to have 2 minus 3 squared plus 1 plus 1. 2 minus 3 is negative 1. Negative 1 squared is 1. 1 plus 1 is 2. It is 2. It is supposed to be 5. It is supposed to be 5. y coordinate of q is 5, not 2. It does not work. C does not work. And D is not going to work either. D will not work either. But well, trust me, it doesn't work. You can try it yourself and you will see it does not work. The answer is A. Answer is A. We're going to stop right here. We're going to meet tomorrow. I'm going to work on the two problems that you see on the next page. 14 and 15. So let me quickly tell you what's going on here, okay? Pay attention here. Make sure you understand the structure of the exam. I'm going to 
I'm going to get in a little bit of a sermon. How many questions are there in, in this section? Listen very carefully. This is very important information. How many questions are there in this section? The answer is there are 20 questions in this section. And all the questions in the SAT are arranged in the order of difficulty. Did you know that? They are arranged in the order of difficulty, easy, medium, and hard. The first one third are easy, the last one third, uh, medium, middle one third are medium, the last one third are hard. Having said that, the scale of difficulty here does not go from 1 through 20. It does not go through 1 through 20 because there are two different kind of questions. So here we have 1 through 15, 1 through 15, 5, 6 through 10, 6 through 10, and 11 through 15. Those are multiple choice questions. It has a scale of its own. It has a scale of its own. 1 through 5 are easy, 6 through 10 are medium, 11 through 15 are hard. What I'm trying to tell you is that the last two questions that we left behind that we're going to do tomorrow, number 14 and 15, they are hard questions. On a scale of 1 through 15, this is how you should read it. On a scale of 1 through 15, they, according to College Board, fall at 14 and 15. And then as soon as you turn the page, as soon as we turn the page, we have 6, or rather 5, 5 gradient questions. Five gradient questions simply means the first two are going to be very simple, last two, last two are going to be very difficult, and the middle one is a medium one. So we're going to save the last two questions of the multiple choice questions, which are the hard ones. We can pick up our story from there, and we're going to do the five gradient questions tomorrow as well. All of them together, all seven of them. All right? I'll see you tomorrow. If you wish to get hold of me, as I said already, you can send me an email at kashwaniprep at, at icloud.com, or you can simply visit the website, kashwani.com. Kishmani I'll see you tomorrow, okay? Bye now.